Hey, how you doing? It's Liam from Push Square. And I don't know if you've noticed, but Sony have been quite quiet about the PlayStation 5 recently. At the time of recording, it's the 3rd of September, and we still don't know when the PlayStation 5 is releasing or how much it will cost. Spare a brief state of play on the 6th of August that mainly focused on PlayStation 4 titles. The last time we received any substantial information about the PlayStation 5 was on the 11th of June 2020. When will we hear more about the PlayStation 5? I think this is a question that most people have on their minds right now, so I've decided to do this speculative video about what could be happening and when we'll finally get the answers to these elusive questions. Before we start, if you could like this video and subscribe to the channel, it would really help us out. So before we start, I do just want to really reaffirm that everything in this video is speculative. This is a picture of me planning this video. All of my information in this video is based on rumours, reports from other sites, and just a general gut feeling from following the industry for as long as I have. So why have Sony not given us a release date, or indeed a price, for the PlayStation 5 yet. We're now at the start of September. The console is rumoured to launch in November, early November, according to some reports. Why have Sony remained quiet. Well, there could be a few reasons for this. And the first one, I do have to mention it. I think it probably is the main reason why both Sony and Microsoft are holding their cards so close to their chest. It's because of the ongoing global pandemic. COVID-19 has caused disruptions throughout not just the gaming industry, but every industry, especially the manufacturing industry. Although both companies would have no doubt finalised their hardware designs probably last year, and they would have been preparing for full blown manufacturing this year, COVID-19 has still undoubtedly had huge ramifications on the design, development, production and marketing of the PlayStation 5. Indeed, the simple fact that the majority of people who work for PlayStation would have been forced to work from home would have been hugely disruptive to their plans for this year. So it does seem like the reason we haven't heard a huge amount is simply because the company is adapting to this new normal. Remember, we all thought that we were going to get our first proper look at the PlayStation 5 in February or March of this year, which never happened. In fact, that presentation never manifested until June. And it makes sense. The world was in a very different position back in March and people didn't know what was going to happen. So, understandably, Sony pushed that back. And indeed, Indeed, they may be doing the same thing now. I think it seems fair that both Sony and Microsoft are both waiting to see what happens with COVID-19. If the pandemic continues into the latter half of the year, there's a chance that something could prevent physical stores from selling the systems, or there could be some kind of disruption when it comes to delivering online orders. The companies might be waiting until last minute so that they have the clearest picture they can have about what that launch window will look like in terms of the pandemic. However, regardless of the pandemic, I think it is quite easy to see that both Sony and Microsoft are both playing chicken with each other when it comes to release date and cost. Neither want to be the first to get out in front and say how much their console is going to cost, because the other is just waiting to undercut it. I think it's pretty safe to say that both consoles will cost around $500 slash £500, and I think as soon as Microsoft or Sony say a number, the other one are going to jump in and say, well, ours is 50 to to £100 cheaper. Because that's how you win a console generation, you play it a little bit dirty. The same thing happened last time. As soon as Microsoft said that the Xbox One was going to feature a pretty draconian approach towards pre-owned games, Sony turned around and said, well, you can share as many games as you want on our console, we don't care. This is how you share your games on PS4. Thanks.
And it's the same thing here. Sony are waiting for Microsoft to turn around and say that theirs is going to be expensive so they can say, well, ours is slightly less and vice versa. However, it does seem pretty fair to assume that both systems will be launching in November. And lots of things point towards this. For starters, a report by our friends over at VGC claim the systems will launch in November because PlayStation has already booked a significant marketing spend for the seven days commencing on Friday, November. 13th. That seems pretty indicative that the console will arrive either on November 13th or within that week commencing November 13th. Development and retail sources also informed the site that the Xbox will reportedly launch first. Microsoft has apparently told developers to plan towards a launch in the very first week of November, which potentially gives it a two-week head start over the PlayStation 5. Also, there are a cluster of cross-gen games releasing around the 13th of November. Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, and the Joker skin pack for Fortnite, which explicitly stipulated that it will release around the launch of next gen consoles, and that launches around the 13th of November. So with this in mind, it seems fair to say that we will find these dates out very, very soon, but when exactly we do, I don't know. But it has to be soon, because that's that's a month and a half away. That's that's not that long away. However, one possibility that I've seen floating around and I would like to address because I think we probably should, just in case, there's the question of will they be delayed? Will Sony and Microsoft delay their next generation consoles? And I think it's always a possibility. It could happen. It's happened before. The PlayStation 3 was originally scheduled to launch in November 2006, but was pushed back to March 2007 following hardware shortages for the Blu-ray drive. Sony didn't announce this delay until September 2006. That was only a month and a half before the console was meant to launch. It would not be an unprecedented decision for Sony or Microsoft or indeed both companies to delay the launch of their next gen systems. I know people are really excited. So are we. We can't wait for the PlayStation 5, but things are completely in flux right now. Not only is there a pandemic, but there's also a global economic depression. People are losing their jobs and money is becoming tight. Manufacturing is being hit hard. We don't know what's going to happen over the next six or indeed 12 months. Games are being delayed left, right and center as companies struggle to adapt to a new form of home working. Halo Infinite, the poster child of Xbox Series X, has been delayed and pushed back to next year. The Xbox Series X isn't launching with a Halo game. In a lot of ways, it would make sense for these companies to cut their losses, to give everyone involved in the launch of the console a little bit of breathing room as they wait to see how the situation develops. But even if it is a possibility, I would be very surprised if they did indeed delay these systems. It could just be that they are in incredibly limited supply, but I do think they will hit that November launch. Hopefully. I mean, I'm hoping, because I really... I really want a PlayStation 5, so I'm hoping that happens. Sony recently started to do a very limited pre-order scheme. People were being emailed and an opportunity to register for the possibility of being able to pre-order. It was a very, very strange way of doing it. And this could be indicative of pre-orders opening soon. And this was just a way for the company to gauge interest from their core fan base and give them an opportunity to get first dibs on a system pre-order. It could be that Sony don't believe that they'll be able to meet demand although I do think that they would have said something by now if that was the case. There's always shortages of new systems. This time will be no different. There may be a slightly more limited supply because of what's happening, but I do think that the email pre-order scheme is probably more indicative that a big announcement is coming. It's on the horizon. We just need to wait a little bit longer. However, I do think it is worth saying that the Nintendo Switch was only fully revealed six weeks or so before its actual launch. We didn't know how much the Switch was going to cost. We didn't know when it was coming out and then in January 2017 Nintendo did a launch conference they gave us the price they gave us the launch day six weeks later it was available for people to buy mobile phones also follow this model Apple and Samsung they don't reveal their phones until a few weeks before they're available to buy it gives companies more breathing room to change their plans if they need to maybe Sony and Microsoft have seen the advantage in this approach to launching hardware and they're just both giving it a try this just might 
might be their approach to marketing and releasing their next gen console. Maybe they would have done this same approach even if we weren't in the situation we're in today. Could be a possibility and it would make sense as well. Like everyone gets so excited about the launch of a new iPhone or the launch of a new Samsung phone and then they have it in their hands two, three weeks later. Maybe it's just the best way of doing this. Who knows? For research about this video, I did have a little look at how the PlayStation 3 and the PlayStation 4 was revealed. The PS3 was revealed at E3 2005. Its price and its release date was revealed at E3 2006. You know, the infamous giant enemy crab conference. Uh, Genji 2 is an action game which is based on Japanese history. The um, stages of the game will also be based on famous battles which took, actually took place in ancient Japan. So here's this giant enemy crab. Disaster. It launched in November in Japan. It was meant to launch the same month in Europe, but it was pushed back to March 2007, as I mentioned earlier. With the PlayStation 4, it was revealed early 2013 at a dedicated event. The design and price of the console was revealed at E3 in June. A release date was then revealed at Gamescom in August of the same year. And then it launched in the US in November and then in PAL territories a fortnight later. So Sony just condensed everything together within that one year with the PlayStation 4. With the PlayStation 5, it was revealed last April. We then didn't hear anything about it really until that Mark Cerny presentation in April. Then we didn't hear anything until June and now we haven't heard anything and it's September. So these are three very different approaches. So it's fair to say that this is the closest to launch Sony have gone without revealing the release date or the price. But I think either way, we're going to find out this month whether or not the console comes out in November whether or not it's delayed. If the console is indeed launching in November, which I do genuinely believe it will, I don't think it'll be delayed, then we have to find out in September. The company will want to gather pre-orders, the company will want to make sure that suppliers can meet demand. We will have some form of dedicated reveal event in September. We have to. Otherwise, we're looking at October? Or are they just going to do a Sega and do one in November? and be like, it's out now? Hopefully not, that would be ridiculous. <laughs> I just, I think one of them has to blink first, Microsoft or Sony. One of them are going to have to just step up and be the bigger company <laughs> and say, yeah, it's coming out in November and it costs a lot of money because it is gonna cost a lot of money. And I think that's why they're shying away from talking about it because no one wants to stand up and be like, yeah, this console, it's going to cost you like half your month's wage. It's like 500 pounds and you can't play Halo on it. <laughs> strange times, my friends. We are living through very strange times. But what do you think? Will it launch in November? Will we find out in September? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and make sure to subscribe to Push Square for everything PlayStation. Thank you, as always, for watching.